Welcome back to Yahoo Finance on the Move. We want to bring back a friend of the program, Jason Ware. He is Albion Financial Group partner and CIO. And not only is his insight valuable, he's got the best do-it-yourself backgrounds of any guest we ever have in Stream V land. All right, Jason, got to talk tech with you. And one of the things you like to talk about is that large cap tech, in particular outperforming for years. Uh, as we are now in this kind of new world, it seems as if the growth for large cap tech uh, there's no cap. It, it can continue to go up, or is that misguided? Hi, guys. Good to be with you as always. And and you know you, you you hit the nail right on the head. So what we have are not just stocks. These are companies, and we have to remember that. And these are companies that have wide moats. They have secular growth. They're high quality, and they continue to gain market share. And I think that's a critical point in understanding why large cap tech has outperformed in the 11 year bull market on the way up. It outperformed in the bear market this year on the way down. It re uh, it cooperated in the bounce back since the late March lows and has actually performed better this week in this little correction. So that continues to be the case because of what you're getting with those companies. Um, you know, look at Microsoft, look at Amazon, their businesses are doing better during this pandemic. So I think stick with those high quality secular growth names and that's that's where investors can hide out on a relative basis. Hey, Jason, it's Julie here. It's good to see you. I want to ask about the involvement in tech stocks, large and, stall, and small, from retail investors. There's been a lot of focus on uh, Dave Portnoy, a.k.a. Stool Presidente, I guess, um, who is now into day trading and is talking with a lot of people about that. So I, I, I'm just curious, as an investor, are you sort of watching that as something entertaining or are you actually taking it into account as something that could be moving the market? Well, Davy Day Trader uh, is definitely an entertaining um, uh, series to watch. Um, I'm not even sure how serious uh, Mr. Portnoy is taking that as opposed to just providing entertainment. But what I think it um, really speaks to in your broader point is that there seems to be a fair amount of retail participation, not only with that type of uh, avenue, but look at what's happening on Robinhood. There's been a lot of discussion about folks coming in on the retail side and bidding up uh, stocks um, that maybe uh, that maybe are very risky and that have high beta, and they're just kind of riding this wave of market resurgence to the tune of 46% off of the lows prior to this week's correction. And I think there's something to that. But as long-term investors at Albion who are stewards of our clients' assets over many years and decades, it's not something that we pay too close attention to. I don't think the fundamentals of Apple, of Visa, of Amazon are going to be any different because Robinhood traders get involved over a few weeks or a few months. We're still sticking to our knitting, which is looking out over many years and trying to assess whether these businesses are worth owning uh, for our clients. Hey, Jason, Rick Newman here. Uh, there is a lot of damage evident throughout the economy, but not so much in the tech sector. Uh, have you detected anything you might call meaningful damage about, among uh, large cap uh, tech companies? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think it speaks to why, as I mentioned earlier, technology has done so well on a relative basis, because, you know, we're seeing a lot of small businesses that are under pressure and that are shutting down, unfortunately, and it's really painful and sad to watch. But the flip side of that is that some of these large technology companies, some of these large consumer companies as well, are actually gaining market share amid that wreck. So, you know, I, I think there are some spots in technology that are doing better than others. Obviously, work from home has been a very um, bright spot in technology. I mean, look at everyone here in this in this panel. We're all working from home and we need connectivity. We need cybersecurity. We need cloud. We need all of these things that these mega cap technology companies are providing. But I think when you start to piece apart some of the other industries within technology, you know, there's been some winners and losers in semiconductors, given the disruptions in the supply chain in Asia and all around the world because of uh, COVID-19. So I think you have to be a little bit more selective in some areas like semiconductors. But by and large, cloud and work from home and cybersecurity and software have been uh, really strong businesses and for understandable reasons throughout this uh, challenging economic environment. Jason, I'm going to ask the question that I think I frequently ask you when we have these discussions about tech, which is price, right? Because you are right. paying up especially on a relative basis, you're paying up for these tech companies. So I know for most of this stuff, you have held it for a long time. So you've been beating this drum for a while. But if you're looking to get into this stuff today, you are definitely paying a premium. Is that a concern? I think that's a fair point. Um, and, and, you know, you have to buy good assets well. 
um, as Howard Marks teaches us. And so I think there's something to that. But I also think it depends on your time horizon. If you're trading these stocks, then you have to be a little bit more careful about whether you pay 30 times earnings versus 25 times earnings and the growth you're getting for that. If you have a three, five or 10 year you know, view as you're getting into these uh, stocks. And I think that matters a little bit less. You certainly don't want to dramatically overpay. But what I think is really interesting and the big takeaway for your viewers and for all of us through this has been what value should we assign these mega cap technology companies that have outperformed for years to the upside, despite all of the hand wringing and naysayers saying they're overvalued, they've run too much, they, they contribute too much to the market return. And then they outperform to the downside when the economy is falling apart. And then they outperform again in the rally back up. I mean, that type of profile, that upside downside profile deserves a premium. So the correct question is what premium? And I think those businesses with those kind of stock features deserve to trade it at a higher multiple. So we're not too concerned about valuations on any of them. And Jason, along those lines of the valuations, it doesn't apply to all of the tech companies, but I'll, I'll just say, throw out Amazon. I mean, there's a real uh, appetite, at least on Capitol Hill, to maybe break up companies like that and have them spin off AWS. Is that something an investor who might be buying at that price needs to be aware of? Is that so far down the road, it's not a concern? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. And it's something that we wrestled with a little bit earlier on this year and late last year, given what was happening in the presidential election. I think there were some candidates that had a uh, had more of an appetite to break up big tech. And I think there was a bigger risk among some of these big technology companies when those folks were in the race. We haven't narrowed down to uh, uh, President Trump and Joe Biden, both of which I don't uh, anticipate have a strong appetite to go in and break up big tech. There might be some additional regulation, but the reality is, as we've seen with Facebook, both in Europe and here, the more regulation just means higher hurdles for small technology companies to compete against them. So I think short of breaking them up, uh, there's very little uh, regulatory risk there. And with the two folks that are running for president and the makeup of Congress likely on the other side of this, we don't think that's a major risk. In fact, we added to our position in Alphabet recently um, on the fact that uh, the political outlook seems to be a little better for these technology companies. Jason Ware, it's always good to see you. Albion Financial Group partner and CIO. And might I say that the weather in Salt Lake looks really good today. That shot looks amazing. beautiful. 90 degrees. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.